Former President Donald Trump is facing new charges with four counts and the special counsel's probe into alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election. This is Trump's third criminal indictment since April, and he is the first former U.S. president to ever face criminal charges. Let's bring in ABC News executive editorial producer John Santucci, as well as Maryland Congressman and former Trump impeachment manager Jamie Raskin. John, I want to start with you. So there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah. Can you sort of explain to us just how historic this indictment is and break down some of the things that we've now learned from this. Yeah, so first of all, I mean, we've said historic and Donald Trump indictment in the same sentence now three times, but we do have to say it again because this is a case that it really resolves around fighting to protect democracy, right? The idea that a former president, while in office, was doing everything he could and his allies to stay in power. And Congressman, uh, you were a manager in uh, Trump's second impeachment trial and a member of the January 6th Select Committee. What's your reaction to this indictment? Well, to me, it feels like a, a huge vindication of the rule of law in American democracy. I mean, for a couple of years now, people have been saying to me, will there really be legal consequences? Will people have to take responsibility and have accountability for what they actually did? And we know there have been 800 criminal convictions for assaulting federal officers for seditious conspiracy, which means conspiracy to overthrow the government, but nothing had gone to the top yet. And so this does feel like a huge vindication. John, you talked to former President Trump yesterday by yeah. phone. What was his mood? What was his reaction to all this? He, he sounded unbelievably subdued when he answered the phone. Very calm, very relaxed. Uh, not somebody that was hyped up at this at all. And quite frankly, uh, as people have told me in recent days, Donald Trump has just been sitting around in Bedminster waiting for this to happen. Uh, the words he used to me, Eva Pylon, said that this is just another effort by, in his mind, Democrats to interfere in the election, being 2024. Uh, and, but when I said to him, you know, Mr. President, when you look at all of these charges, when you weigh them, what, what, what's that word that comes to mind? Ridiculous was the word he used. But is he worried about all of this? So not on the phone with me, right? I think Donald Trump, we all know this, there's a public Donald Trump, and there's the private Donald Trump. The bravado, I've got this, you know, I'm here to you know, fight on, don't worry about it. That's the Trump that I got on the phone. Privately, what I hear from my sources that have been around and seeing the president the last couple of days, angry livid, mm. raising a lot of questions about this. And we have to rewind a little bit, right? When that target letter came two weeks ago telling him that charges were coming on January 6th, stupefied was the word I heard from multiple sources because this was the one they did not think was going to hit Trump. They knew documents. They knew Manhattan. We're waiting on another case down in Fulton County, Georgia. January 6th was not on the Trump list. And we do want to point out that the uh, Trump campaign has released a statement in response to these uh, charges, if we can put it up, uh, saying, quote, the lawlessness of these persecutions of President Trump and his supporters is reminiscent of Nazi Germany in the 1930s, the former Soviet Union, and other authoritarian dictatorial regimes. Uh, Congressman, what do you make of this comparison right here? Um, well, of course, he has it exactly backwards. It's a kind of moral dyslexia represented in that statement right there uh, because it was precisely a, an authoritarian attack on our constitutional democracy, which is being prosecuted uh, by the special counsel, by Jack Smith here. There was a conspiracy to obstruct the peaceful transfer of power. There was a conspiracy to defraud the American people out of an honest election. Joe Biden beat Donald Trump by more than 7 million votes, 306 to 232 in the Electoral College. Um, and that's what Donald Trump was attempting to overthrow, first by going to the legislatures, then by going to the Department of Justice, by calling Secretary of State Brad Raffensperger in Georgia, saying, just find me uh, 11,780 votes. And then finally, by trying to get Mike Pence to step outside of his constitutional role, just presiding over the ceremony, simply to declare Donald Trump the winner or to force the entire contest into the House of Representatives for a so-called contingent election. But all of that was an attack on the rule of law, which is characteristic, of course, of fascism and authoritarianism and totalitarian movements. So as usual, he's projecting his own will and his own intention onto our justice system, which is doing its job. All right, we're out of time, but we thank you so much for yours. Again, thank you, John and Congressman. We appreciate it. Thank you. 
there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.